For our student athletes, you have a home and an enhanced com competitive environment. So I think all in all, it's a win for them, it's a win for us, and we look forward to the next couple of years. Stu, have you settled on will it be true 20 game, round robin, 18 game, 16? Um, that decision is in the midst of our governance process, but just to manage your expectations on the men's side, it's likely to be uh, an 18 game schedule in basketball. And on the women's side, it's likely to be a 20 game round robin schedule. There have been discussions about a longer term partnership with Oregon State and Washington State, or are you guys just kind of focusing on the next two years and going from there? Uh, there, there hasn't been a, a discussion beyond that. And the reason is Oregon State and Washington State entered this affiliation agreement uh, because they needed to buy themselves some time. And that's legitimate. They have a scheduling football alliance that, um, uh, you know, they'll have for the next couple of years. And in that two-year period, they'll attempt, I think, to do two things. One is to try to uh, become a member of an existing uh, conference that will take them uh, with football. Uh, or they'll attempt to reconfigure, you know, the Pac-12 in some manner. Uh, if they accomplish that, so be it. Uh, if not, and football separate somewhere, they always have a home in the WCC. Stu, what's the difference for the games, men versus women's hoops, the 20 versus 18? Why is it different? Um, I, you know, on the women's side, it just makes more sense. Uh, you know, certainly both of those schools coming into the conference provides more depth and strength uh, to the women's conference. Um, you know, on the men's side, I make no secret about this, our goal is to try and achieve as many units and invitations to the NCAA tournament as possible. And those invitations are directly dependent upon our ability to both perform and enhance our metrics. And if we play a 20 game round robin with the men, uh, there are certain situations for some teams where the metrics are going to get compromised. And that's not in our best interest, uh, either competitively or financially. Do you expect to introduce travel partners? I, I think a lot of people think with Gonzaga and WC, it would make sense for those two to be partners, maybe with Oregon State and Portland. Or is it going to be kind of similar to this season without the true travel partners? It'll be similar to this season. I mean, with 11 members, it's a little bit dicey to try and do that. Uh, but that being said, when we set up the schedule, uh, by way of example for basketball, we'll make every attempt to reduce travel and reduce costs. I mean, the conference office is not in a position where, uh, you know, we want to spend our school's money. We want to, you know, make it as efficient as we can. Stu, I'm wondering how you uh, deal with the rumors of other conferences trying to poach certain schools, maybe their conference, such as maybe a Gonzaga rumor or something. I'm, I'm just wondering how you deal with that. You know, I, I think you have to deal with it, uh, you know, in the moment. You know, um, the example you use with Gonzaga, they're a member of the WCC. From all indications, just dealing with them over the past year, uh, their focus is the WCC and helping us to become stronger, you know, financially, you know, stable. Uh, but listen, you know, we're in a national landscape in large part due to football realignment where there's going to be a shuffle uh, that, you know, we've you know, seen it over the past seven months. It's going to continue. And, you know, a school like Gonzaga, who's our member, uh, it's... I'm not surprised that other conferences would be interested in them or other members of our, our conference. It's just something you have to deal with in the moment. I think that being said, we have to control what we can control. And if we continue to add full-time members uh, along with our affiliates, it's going to strengthen our conference and, and in fact maybe in some way uh, de-incentivize schools from going elsewhere. It's not a bad place to be in the WCC. You see more coming in expansion, even with these two coming aboard? Or are I, you just kind of set? I don't have a crystal ball, obviously, but yes. I, I, I do think there'll be another wave or uh, you know, instances of realignment because of football. Um, you know, it, it, 
the national landscape would really indicate that, uh, but it's dependent upon you know, what the financial needs are of individual institutions. Um, by way of example, you know, all power for schools are not created equal. You know, you have some of those schools that have budgets upwards to $100 million, but you also have power for football conference schools that are in that 50 to 100 range. And depending on what the financial requirements are going forward, perhaps those in the 50 to 100 range may not think the best thing to do is to stay where they are. So maybe they would consider realigning somewhere. Uh, we don't know, but uh, that's how unpredictable and fluid this landscape is. Is it iron clad for two years, or is there a way if things work out from all zoos and Oregon states and to make it one year? On yeah. Year end? yeah, any agreement you have, yeah, they, they have an out, right? Um, but certainly there's a penalty you know, for that out. I know you're on the, uh, the NCAA Oversight Committee. Um, what, are, what are your thoughts on tournament expansion? Um, that's been a big conversation point the last uh, month, or I guess maybe the last year now. Yeah, it's, it's certainly been a topic of discussion, and ultimately, you know, the Men's Basketball Oversight Committee, um, you know, will eventually put forth a recommendation, but I would say that tournament expansion, if you talk to some, is inevitable. Uh, then there are others that feel uh, the tournament is the, the size that it should be at 68 teams. But if expansion is an option that we'll discuss, in my mind, uh, the maximum number would be 80. Because with an 80 game, excuse me, 80 team tournament, uh, it, it's sort of an easy add on because you would just extend the first four to you know, additional sites to get yourself to 80. Uh, the problem with extending you know, beyond more than 80 games is the tournament's landlocked by two pillars, and that is Selection Sunday, and that show, and then the other side is the Masters. Uh, and neither one of those are going to move. The tournament, at least in my mind, needs to fit in that window. With the Pac-12 dissolving, what can the WCC do to take uh, advantage of that and to get more revenue, media rights, all the things that go along with the Pac-12 going away? Geez, um, I, I don't think we know quite yet, uh, you know, honestly. Um, you know, we had a discussion this morning with ESPN and, uh, you know, there may be some it may advantage the WCC in terms of broadcast windows or times that we could play, which would ultimately give us more exposure than we have now. Uh, that's possible. Um, you know, from a financial standpoint, uh, remains to be seen. Uh, again, I can't emphasize enough that we should control what we can control. And we know that if we continue to become more competitive uh, by adding either affiliate members and full-time members that ultimately uh, those rewards you know financially will come to us having really nothing to do or little to do uh, with the, the Pac-12 other than we're sharing you know two of their schools as affiliates but you know uh, there's opportunity there but you know what happens in this environment remains to be seen.